Hey everybody, welcome. It's Paul from InsidePATraining.com. Uh, MyPATraining.com, either way works. It'll get you there to the blog. Um, I'm back from clinic and I want to do uh, another video on stethoscopes. Just did one on the parts, so you should have a pretty, un pretty good understanding of the parts of a stethoscope. But I want to talk a little bit about how they work and how, knowing how your stethoscope works in a little more detail than, than you see in most videos will help you to understand how to use it properly. So we already talked about the parts. So you got the ear tips, the binaurals, the flexible tubing, diaphragm, the smaller diaphragm. But how do these actually work? Um, one of the misconceptions people have, and I've seen this in, in some other videos, is that there's some kind of diaphragm in the ear tip, and there isn't. This is just a hole right here. Let's see if I can get it on the camera. There you go. Just a hole. And that hole goes straight through the binaural into the tubing down to the chest piece. And uh, that's kind of important in how this sucker works. So I'll take, for instance, the diaphragm. As you probably know, sound comes from uh, pressure waves. So any kind of sound that your heart makes is a, a wave of pressure that's sent through your chest wall. And when the diaphragm is sitting on the heart, we'll do normally you'd examine the second intercostal space, left sternal border, whatever. But you listen to the heart here with the diaphragm. Uh, a little vibration from the sound from your heart would be picked up by this diaphragm. And it would move this diaphragm back and forth ever so slightly, much the way um, the skin of a drum moves back and forth when you beat on it. And that sound, uh, that vibration, is transferred through the diaphragm and into this flexible tubing. Now, one thing you'll notice right off is the diaphragm's pretty big around. It's about an inch and a half diameter. And this flexible tubing is probably less than a centimeter, the internal diameter. So you've got a large, um, think of this as a microphone, a large microphone and a, a small tube that it's transferring that uh, sound into. What that means is for every tiny motion that the diaphragm makes, that motion is going to be magnified in the amount of this column of air that moves up and down. If, if this tube were as big around as the diaphragm, then it would only move just as much as the diaphragm moves. But because the diaphragm is bigger, this tube is moving up and down. The, the column of air inside the tube is moving up and down quite a bit. And what that does, it sends air with every vibration. It sends a little bit of air out this tube back and forth, these little tiny pressure waves of air. And they feel like little puffs of air if you were ever able to actually feel them. That's really all they are. Uh, those pressure waves are sent into your ear. Now the reason there's no diaphragm here on this end is that the diaphragm is in your head. Um, it's your tympanic membrane or your eardrum. Okay, So that little bit of air goes in your auditory canal and it pushes and pulls on your tympanic membrane and voila you have sound transmission and you know when you get into to school and you study anatomy and all that you learn about all the, the path through the cochlea and the auditory nerve but it's pretty simple to understand you get air moving in and out of your ear you're going to hear some sound okay that's how it works now what I want to explain to you is the difference between how the diaphragm and the bell works. Now, some people mistakenly think of this as, call this the bell. It's not. This is actually a small diaphragm. This is the large diaphragm. This is the small diaphragm. And uh, the large diaphragm picks up most of the sounds that you're going to want to hear um, in medicine. The small diaphragm generally isn't used for picking up different sounds, although it, it will filter out some of the lower tones that you'll get in here. Um, because it's a smaller diaphragm. If you think about smaller drums have higher sounds because that, that membrane moves less, uh, it creates a higher tone. That sort of makes sense how this would pick up higher tones than the larger diaphragm. But we really don't use it to pick up different sounds. We use it because of different patients and that is this smaller diaphragm is generally used in pediatrics. Children are smaller, their, their organs are closer together, and we need to be very specific where we listen when we listen to their heart. And if you have this great big old diaphragm on a very, think of a, um, 
a newborn, you know, you'd be listening to three areas of the heart at once with this diaphragm. And there are even pediatric stethoscopes with slightly smaller diameters than this, diaphragms than this. Um, generally, this is this is sort of the uh, Littman Cardiology 3, sort of the standard, gold standard scope, because you can use it to listen to adults and children. It kind of works adequately for both. So you see it a lot in primary care. Um, if you have a stethoscope with a bell, and I wish I did, um, the bell is actually, um, it actually receives the lowest sounds. It will register the lowest sounds. You'll be able to hear them better, the lowest tones. Because it doesn't even have a diaphragm. What it's using as a diaphragm is the patient's skin. When you press the bell against the patient's skin, the patient's skin is actually moving back and forth. And that's how you get the lower tones. Um, and it sort of makes sense that we were talking about the size of the diaphragms. If you push, let's just imagine this is a bell. If you push it against the patient firmly, you've now made the skin taut. And the skin won't move quite as much. And you will lose those larger wavelengths that transmit lower sounds. So when you use a diaphragm, the key is you hold it gently against the skin. And you get good sound transmission. If you, um, I, I knew someone who had a large diaphragm and a bell stethoscope and they one day broke this and I don't know if they sat on it or what but they broke the large diaphragm so the diaphragm wasn't working so the rest of the day they knew how to use a bell when they wanted to listen to higher tones they just push firmly and they get pretty much a diaphragm action out of a bell when they wanted to listen to lower tones they just ease off and listen gently and you get a whole different sound quality so that's pretty much how it works. I hope that helps you. If you're interested in learning about where we listen to the different um, heart valves and heart sounds, uh, bowel sounds, lung sounds, um, what to listen for, there's some great resources out there. I would direct you to the blog to, to read the post that um, we've written that talks about that. It's called Tools of the Trade, the Stethoscope and How to Use It. So if you haven't looked at that and you're interested in a little more detail about the actual medicine of the stethoscope, check it out. You can find it at uh, the, my, the Inside PA Training blog, which is at mypatraining.com. Or if it's easier to remember, you can also get there by going to insidepatraining.com. Please come by, leave a comment, a question. We'd love to hear from you. We have a forum, all kinds of great stuff. So I hope you'll join us. Thanks a lot.